Hello and welcome to Clash of Rams. On this week's episode, our panel will be discussing gun control in light of the recent events in Las Vegas. This week, our panel consists of Ray Martinez, a council member of Fort Collins City Council, Juan Caro uh, of the Conservative Interest Group of Colorado, and Alec Brust, the opinion editor of the Rocky Mountain Collegian here at Colorado State University. So first off, I just want to know, what do you guys think of gun control just as a concept? Honestly, sir, I have to be frank with you. Me and Juan, we do have very similar views on gun control. We do both believe that there needs to be something done because there is an epidemic here in the United States. And for me personally, I believe that gun control is an institutionalized issue and that it is an issue with the bureaucracy and that it is an issue with um, the expectations that we have put down on the background checks that we have for people to get guns. Okay. And uh, Juan, what do you think? For, you mentioned background checks, and for example, the the Florida shooting that happened at the nightclub. Oh yeah. The mm -hmm. the police and the FBI were contacted by the store owner that sold him the the weapons, and I guess the bureaucracy just didn't work out. I, I don't think we need to expand the background checks. I think we just need to make what we have more efficient, more, more up to date, and, and just that alone would would make a difference. But we've been hearing a lot of. Um, banning certain types of weapons, uh, banning guns in general. The, the debate was polarized 10 minutes after the incident. Yeah. So I, I want to hear kind of the liberal view on this, and I'll, I'll build up on that. Yeah, and I think that there's this disparity between, you know, liberals and conservatives and that we have to assimilate to this certain view, especially on gun control, where liberals have to be, you know, totally against all guns and totally in line with banning guns. And then conservatives have to be, you know, giving complete freedom to gun owners. And I think that we need to find, you know, not so much polarize these issues, but find the solution that will minimize harm in the best way and not polarize the issue any further. Because it doesn't need to be polarized. What, what solutions do you, do you have? Well, well, first off, guys, uh, Ray Martinez, yeah. uh, you were in law enforcement for mm -hmm. how many years? 25 years. 25 years in law enforcement, quarter of a century. And uh, how has that time in law enforcement affected what you think of gun control and what well, you think of it as an issue? I, I think when you talk about gun control, that's a misnomer. I, I think it, it's not really about gun control. It's really about gun management okay. and how we manage our system, the process, the bureaucracy, all the delays and interferences that we have in the management process is what causes the confusion, the delays, and the late interactions of trying to deal with people who should not have guns in their hands. Okay. So that's that's part of the problem. Uh, myself, uh, having experience in law enforcement, being involved in a shooting uh, myself uh, back in uh, November 7th, 1977 at 107 in the morning, where a person pointed a gun at me at face point which left with mm -hmm. no choice. So it's a matter of survival at that point. So looking at it from that perspective and then seeing it from a perspective of an actual international terrorism case that occurred in Fort Collins in October 13th, I think it was, 1980, where a Libyan student was shot twice in the head and left for dead uh, and was a hired hitman. They used a Saturday night special gun, which is very typical. It's a very common practice for handguns, what they call throw guns. Uh, using a Saturday night special to use to kill people. That's a very common practice. And that person, that hitman, was hired by, uh, later identified as a guy named by Edwin Wilson, who was in charge of covert operations for the CIA, who was working for Muammar Gaddafi. Muammar Gaddafi hired him to kill this Libyan student. Okay. How do you think that uh, people, how do you think that people, it should be decided who should and should not get a gun, or who should be allowed to buy a gun and who should not be allowed to buy a gun, if well, at all. That, that's a longer discussion than we have time for, but I, I think what we're finding today is that in the mass shootings, people involved in the mass shootings, we're finding there seems to be a common thread, and that is those people who are on antidepressants or coming off antidepressants seems to be the ones that looks like they're the ones who are being involved in these shootings. So how do you manage that, and how do you control that? Well, you can't really control it, but you can, through a process, maybe there's a better way of managing how guns get in the hands of people who may be suffering from some mental illness or coming off medication for mental illness. And maybe the medication itself is having a side effect that we don't understand. Okay. 
And uh, what do you two think of that? Ray, I think you bring up a really important point, which is that we cannot really control people. You know, you mm -hmm. cannot control the fact that there is evil in this world and that people are going to, you know, if they want to kill other people. That's right. And so it's all about minimizing harm. And mm -hmm. you know, you can't you can't change people, but you can change the process in which people are able to get these guns. Mm -hmm. Juan, do you have anything to say? Yeah, you can't. You simply can't outlaw evil, and <clears throat> you can you can try to ban the guns. But we've seen countless situations. Uh, I, I brought a couple that that happened in Europe, where they didn't use guns, and they killed over a hundred people, hundred ninety people here, hundred ninety people there, and, and and they were using uh, homemade bombs with acetone and 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 peroxide, and mm -hmm. you, you just simply can't outlaw evil, mm -hmm. and and the certain tragedies. It, we, we, I think we have a mental health issue disguised as a gun issue in the United States. And I don't believe that banning uh, AR-15s or bump stocks is going to solve that. that the, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to tackle the root of that issue. Well, you look at serial killers like Gacy in Chicago, who dressed up as a clown and lured kids into his house and killed dozens of kids, didn't use a gun. Mm -hmm. you know, but that guy was a serial killer that nationwide attention about what he was like. Not to mention other serial kill killers in the same way. But if a people's mindset is to kill, they will kill whether they have a gun or a pitchfork. We, we, we also see the situations where guns are completely outlawed, like in uh, November 2015, the Paris attack. There were uh, 137 killed, 368 injured. Um, how did they get those guns if guns were illegal? There was gun control. Well, and there's the, the strongest gun control was in Washington, D.C., where you couldn't even own a gun in your home, which was totally unconstitutional. And the Supreme Court later ruled that you can't do that in Washington, D.C. But yet, even while they were regulating so hard, the strongest regulations in the United States, they still had the most shootings. And Chicago. Chicago has mm -hmm. the strongest regulations now, and they have more shootings than anyone else in the United States. So the regulation isn't so much the answer. It was 57 people died ruled homicide in Chicago from shootings in just a month of September. We were almost at 500. Yeah, I think I think it just passed 500 yesterday. It passed yeah. 500 yeah. yesterday. And they have yeah. some of the most strict gun regulations in, in the country. And we have the issue of banning AR-15s, for example. But you are more likely to, tang to get tangled in your sheets and fall out of bed and die <laughs> than you are from dying from an AR-15. I think it's 500 people, under 500 people a year die in the United States from AR-15s, or from rifles in general. It's even smaller, the number. When you're, when you're looking at the applicants. Well, and, you know, every two years, there's about 52,000 people that are killed by drunk drivers, and it's a misdemeanor. So wow. when you think about it in those terms, which life is more important, whose lives are we talking about, and we're killing a lot of people in a lot of other ways that are much higher in number. What I want to get into next is uh, how do you guys think, or what level of government do you guys think should be taking care of this? Like, should it be a city level or a <laughs> state, maybe even county, or should it be the federal government? that is taking care of this problem and regulating stuff? Well, I think all branches of the government have some say in the government gun regulations. Uh, the feds have their laws, uh, the state has laws, even home rule cities like us have laws, like you can't fire a weapon in the city limits. That's one example of gun regulation that we have. So th it's done at all levels, and because we're a home rule city, we can enact ordinances that are germane to us and the environment that we live in. Okay. So you think that it should be whatever, whatever the culture of the area is, that that should kind of be more dominant than the other stuff? It's not necessarily just because of the culture, but uh, the, the, government, the people run the government. The government doesn't run the people. Okay. So the people decide by vote and by ordinances that the representatives that they elect make that decision on what kind of controls do they want. We don't even allow slingshots in the city. So We have uh, the issue of does D.C. know, do the bureaucrats in D.C. know what's best for gun owners in Nebraska, for example. So I, I believe it should be at the state level. The state should decide what, what gun regulations they pass or restrictions they pass. Wyoming might have uh, restrictions much more relaxed than, than Florida, for example, or, or even Colorado. So. It, it could be at a state level. I, I personally believe it should be at the state level. And the background checks should be at the state level also. I think that the state of Florida should do its individual background checks. Maybe they would have uh, stopped the, the nightclub shooter in Orlando quicker if there was less uh, bureaucracy involved. But you do need some national attention to that because uh, under the federal guidelines, you have what we call NCIC searches. <laughs> so you can search all 50 states. If you do it at the state level and don't give 
uh, an audience to the other states, then you, you're losing a lot of data. So there needs to be some way of having accessing that national data bank to see if this person didn't have a mental illness problem in New York City. Yeah, I agree. And then we also have that, you know, this issue where people are crossing state lines and, you know, how to deal with those right. um, instances there. But I agree at the sense that there does need to be this federal standard that we have that then the states can go off of so that we um, do not have those disparities between state lines and stuff like that. But I agree, one. I think that it should be at the state level because, like you said, somebody in D.C. isn't exactly going to know how a bureaucracy in Nebraska is going to work in relations with their bureaucracies there. So I agree, it should be at the state level. And uh, what do you guys think should go into this kind of thing? Like you mentioned background check, or background checks are obviously one of the major things, but is there anything else that you guys believe should go into this? Or should background checks be more thorough or less? Or Yeah, what do you guys think of that? Background checks need to be better managed and what access they have. Unfortunately, because of personnel records and uh, health records and things, there's a limit control on how much you can get into people's health <laughs> records. So uh, how else are you going to find out unless you have that access? And then that becomes a question of a, another constitutional issue, can they do that or not? So because of things like the Buckley Act and those kinds of laws that prohibit you from getting into people's medical records. Mm -hmm. you guys have any thoughts on that? We run into constitutional concerns, privacy concerns, when it comes down to purchasing weapons. and. It's a conversation we need to have, but we can't allow the, the conversation to get so polarized to the point where you have Hillary Clinton and the NRA having a Twitter fight 20 minutes after the incident. Yeah, it's this just, should, and guns should not be used as this, you know, the, the matter is that guns do kill people. Guns are used solely to kill people. They are weapons that are used to kill. That's what they are used to it for. So we need to have these conversations and continue to, you know, uh, make these laws evolve and see what is best for our country. And like you said, it is an evolving conversation and it requires, you know, stipulations from both sides and both sides of this argument need to come together so that we can have a cohesive law when it comes to guns. Well, yeah. some of these laws that are enacted sometimes are there to protect law enforcement as well. Yes, so a law enforcement officer who comes and stops a person that is acting suspicious or something leads them to think they might be carrying a weapon under what the case law of Terry versus Ohio allows them to do a, a patent search to make sure they're not carrying a gun on them it protects the officer from harm as well but as you can see in the past year we've had law enforcement people who are ambushed so that makes it even more difficult to uh, save lives of law enforcement people as well yeah it's all about minimizing harm on all levels mm -hmm. so uh, lastly I want to know what just like what general thoughts you guys had coming into this anything that you wanted to mention when we began this discussion. Yeah, um, I, I wanted just to bring up, and we should have done this earlier, but kind of the purpose of the Second Amendment. And there's a lot of confusion. People think it's designed for hunting. Uh, they think it's only designed for protecting your home. But the idea of the Second Amendment, when we founded this country, when this country was founded, was to protect the citizens against a, a tyrannical government. And sometimes that leaves the debate. And we, uh, I've heard the argument that you know, the United States would never become tyrannical. It's never going to look like Stalin's, uh, you know, mm -hmm. disastrous government or, or, you know, what Hitler did. But when you look at even Venezuela, Venezuela 10 years ago was uh, the utopia for, prominent, for yeah, very prominent. A, a socialist regime. Mm -hmm. And then it turns out to be a totalitarian regime. Look at it now. They, mm -hmm. 10 years ago, would have never imagined that that would have happened. They went through gun regist registration, then they went through confiscation. And, and look at Venezuela today. And I have dozens of examples where this happened. And since, you know, in the, since the 20th century, we see that governments have killed over 250 million of their own people, not even at, in, in wars, of their own people. And, and that's basically the reason of the Second Amendment. We have the most powerful government in the world, and we have the most powerful citizens in the world. We have 320 million guns in the hands of 50 million Americans. So I think that's, that's important to, to understand the purpose of the Second Amendment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, I think that it is important, like you said, that, that guns are a means of protection is basically more or less what you are saying, is that we need guns to protect ourselves. And uh, But we also do need to say, like I said earlier, we need to recognize that guns are a weapon and that guns are used solely to murder and that people are, like you said, there is evil in the world and that this is something that can be utilized by the evil in the world. And so it's always going to be a constant conversation about what is going to be the best solution for this. And I think that we can agree that 
ultimately the ultimate goal that we should have in every conversation, no matter what side you're coming from, is to minimize harm. I, I, I think, sorry. Oh yeah, Ray. No, I, I, all I was going to say is that, I mean, it's, it's, a, Pat, it's, it's a tough statement to say when you say guns are solely used to kill people. It, it's really not because people use guns to hunt. Mm -hmm. They use it just for protection well, to themselves. kill in general. Animals too, I guess. Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. So that that's fair enough. Um, I like that. Phrase. <laughs> so, but I think the key thing to remember when we look at this, uh, how you encompass everything, is is remembering that what does our constitution say? It says we the people, not we the government, but we the people have the say of how government should act and perform. Yeah. I I also want to bring up the fact that the the University of Chicago did a study and they basically came out and said that if the intent of the of the person that's committing the crime is to kill, then banning guns would have no effect. If there is someone that's so messed up in the head that they're willing to go out and attack a group of 100 people, 200 people, banning the gun will have no effect. They'll find other ways. They'll use nail bombs. They'll use homemade bombs. It, 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 if someone's intent to kill, if someone's intent is to kill, then banning guns will have no effect, and things, that's important. Things can improve if we change the way we look at things, then we know exactly. the things we look at will change. Well, I think that's a great way to end. I want to thank you guys for coming on, especially Councilman Martinez and uh, Juan. Thanks, so. Your socks, hey, Union Jack. Socks? It's the Brexit socks. socks. You have to represent ridiculous. our friends across the pond. <laughs> <laughs> well, Good Rams, luck out there. Thanks for tuning in. We'll be back in two weeks. Thanks, guys.